In this video, I want to talk about second application of Bernoulli's equation and this is called as speed of efflux. So imagine there is a container and in this container there is some fluid filled up to a height of h1 from the ground. So what is interesting in this beaker, there is a hole uh, at a height h2 above the ground which has area of cross section a2. So uh, practically as you can imagine the liquid is going to come out from this hole and the initial velocity with which it comes out will be horizontal and I have assumed it to be V2. The area of the upper surface of the liquid is A1 and the velocity with which the liquid is going down at this level is V1. Uh, there is air all around so atmospheric pressure is P0. So I want to find out now that what is the speed with which the liquid is coming out from this hole. This is called as speed of efflux. So the meaning of this word efflux, efflux simply means discharge. To proceed, I will assume that the liquid inside this container is my system. So this whole liquid in this container is my system. And I want to apply Bernoulli's theorem in this. So I'll choose two surfaces. Uh, the surface number one which is the upper surface and surface number two which is the which is this surface so i want to choose these two as my two points i want to apply bernoulli's theorem between these two points so uh, the pressure at this is p naught so p naught plus the height of this level is h1 so rho g h1 plus half rho v1 squared which will be equal to the pressure here. What do you think the pressure here is? Do you think that the pressure here is rho g h, h1 minus h2, that is this height, or the pressure is p naught? So if you remember the proof where we took this kind of tube and we assumed that the liquid in this section is our system, uh, you remember what was the pressure? The pressure was the pressure just before this surface and just after the surface. So uh, the pressure was from the rightwards of the other liquid and from the leftwards of this side. What we wanted was we wanted to find out the force on the system, not the force by the system. And therefore the pressure here will be the pressure from the outside, which is the atmospheric pressure P0. So at 2, the pressure will be P0 again plus rho g h2 plus half rho v2 squared. So this will be Bernoulli's equation in this case. P0, P0 would get cancelled out. And I'll get rho g h1 minus h2 will be equal to half rho v2 squared minus v1 squared. And if I look at this equation carefully, I'll see that uh, rho rho get cancelled out. And this fluid is incompressible, so I can use my equation of continuity, that is A1 V1 will be equal to A2 V2. From here, I can substitute the value of V1 in terms of V2 because I want V2. So from here, V1 is A2 upon A1 into V2. I'll just put this guy here and my equation becomes... I'll take this on left hand side. So V2 squared minus A2 upon A1 whole squared into V2 squared will be equal to 2G H1 minus H2. So H1 minus H2 is actually the height difference between these two points. That is, this is H1 and this is H2. From this equation, I can take V2 squared common and one more thing to notice here is that if, if my area 2 is very very small as compared to my area 1 because the surface of the liquid at the top has higher area and if this hole is pretty small as if it is pretty small as compared to the area of the surface then A2 by A1 this ratio is going to be very very less than 1. So A2 by A1 will be very very less than 1. So I can approximate it to zero. In that case, in that approximation, I'll just get my V2 as under root 2G H1 minus H2. And this velocity is my velocity of a flux. 
Sometimes this equation is also called as Torricelli's theorem. So Torricelli's theorem. After finding out V2, I can also find out my discharge rate, which is going to be A2 into V2. One very interesting point to note here is that if I drop a particle, if I drop a particle from rest from this height, so if this is my particle, and initial velocity is zero, then as this guy reaches the same height, that is h1 minus h2, the speed gained by this particle will also be under root 2g h1 minus h2. So this is pretty interesting. The speed with which the water is coming out is same uh, as the speed of this particle would have gained in this case. One more thing that I want to do here is that I want to find out an answer to a pretty interesting question. I want to find out that what should be the height of this hole from the ground, what should be this h2, so that the water that comes out reaches the maximum horizontal distance uh, on the floor. So uh, you understand the problem statement? So I want to find out this height h2, what should, what should this be in terms of known height h1 so that the water comes out in such a speed that it reaches the maximum distance horizontally. Do understand that this question is different from the maximum speed with which the water comes out because the maximum speed is just going to be just above the lowermost point. So this because it depends upon uh, the height from the surface. If you maximize the height, you maximize the speed and height will be maximized at this level when this h2 becomes zero. So that is not my problem statement. My problem statement is what with what speed this comes out so that it covers the maximum distance for this given level of h1. To do that, I want to apply a well-known concept of finding out a maxima of any function. So if I just find out my h2, if water is coming out with this speed, and uh, do note that this speed is uh, horizontal. So this speed has this direction. It has no vertical component. So vertically, uh, vertically, the speed is in the vertical direction ui is zero of the water that is coming out, right? And this, if this is zero, height is h2. I can find out what the, what's the time taken. So I apply s in the vertical direction is equal to u in the vertical direction into t plus half a y t squared. If I do this, this factor becomes zero. Vertical displacement is h2. So h2 is equal to half g t squared. From here, I get my time as under root 2 h2 by g. And if this is my time, then for this much amount of time, the liquid would have traveled horizontally. So the horizontal distance covered by the liquid, horizontal distance x will be equal to this guy v2 here. This is the speed with which the water is coming out. It is not changing with time because there is no force in the horizontal direction. So there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction and speed remains constant. So I can just apply distance is equal to speed into time. So my distance is going to be vx into t, which is under root 2g h1 minus h2, h1 minus h2 into under root 2h2 divided by g. Now after doing all of this, I want to differentiate this function. I want to find out the maxima of this function. Uh, if I want to find out the maxima of this, of this function, then that will be uh, same as the maxima of sx squared. So if I square on both the sides, I'll get 2g h1 minus h2 into 2h2 divided by g. Now I want to differentiate this and equate it to zero. So I'll just differentiate it with respect to h2 because h2 is the variable height, h1 is fixed. So if I do this, I'll get so this factor is constant, whatever is constant, I'll just pull, pull this out. So 4 gg will get cancelled out. 4, so I want to differentiate d by dh2 for 4 into h1 h2 minus 4 h2 squared, which will be equal to 4 h1 minus 
8 h2 so from here h2 will be equal to h1 by 2 so the height above which there is a hole if that height is equal to half the height of the upper surface of the liquid then in that case the water is going to travel to the maximum distance possible now next we want to move on to a really interesting question so in this question there is a large cylindrical tank which has a hole of area a at its bottom so i've drawn a tank and there's a hole at the bottom and this hole has area a so the area of this is a Water is poured in this tank by a tube of equal cross-sectional area A ejecting water at the speed of V. So there is some pipe and this pipe also has the same area A. And through this pipe water is coming out with the speed V. Now there are four options and there is one out of these which is correct. So option number A says that uh, the water level in the tank will keep on rising. Okay, No water can be stored in the tank. The water level will rise to a height v square upon 2g and then stop. The water level will oscillate. Okay, so let's find out. Let's imagine that at t is equal to 0 when we started filling water inside the cylinder. Uh, the, there was no water inside this and it started rising. As the level will rise, let's find out what is going to happen. See, suppose you are taking a bath and uh, you have your tap open and the water is coming out of it at some rate and simultaneously when the water is getting filled in the bucket you are also uh, taking uh, cups full of water and pouring onto yourself so there is also water that is being taken out simultaneously so when this all happens how can you tell if the water level is going to rise or is it, or, or is it going to fall or is it going to stay the same simple you'll just say that if the rate at which the water is being filled is greater than the rate at which the water is going out then the water level it will rise if the inlet rate is a small then the outlet rate then water level will fall and if they're equal then the water level is going to stay the same so the same logic we are going to apply in this question also we will see that uh, at what height the inflow rate is equal to the outflow rate so inflow rate is a into v this is the rate at which this is the amount of water per unit time. So this V and this V are different. This is volume per unit time and this is velocity. So this is the volume of the liquid that is incoming into the cylinder per unit time. Now, now let's find out what should be the velocity of this guy so that these two are equal. So if this velocity is V1, then A into V is equal to A into V1, which will be when v1 is equal to v so if the rate at which water is going out of this is also a v then the water level is going to stay the same so let, now let's find out at what height this is going to be suppose this height is h and at this height the, the velocity is v now as per the Torricelli's theorem we know that v is equal to under root 2 g h so from here h is equal to v square divided by 2g so that's it the water will start rising it will rise till a height of v square upon 2g and then it is going to settle at that height because if it goes beyond then the outlet rate will be more than the inlet rate and in that case again it will come down so when the water is rising from the bottom then it is just going to reach this height and then it is going to stop at the site. So according to our analysis, uh, I think that option C is correct.